start our discussion today with um, an oldie but a goodie. Uh, I think one that will make you happy to go back to uh, talking about the old days of Legal Sports <laughs> Report back when it was covering almost exclusively uh, daily fantasy sports before the legalization of sports betting. And one of the founders of FanDuel, Nigel Eccles, who ultimately left the company, and then there was a fairly sizable dispute over what he and some other uh, initial people involved in the company were paid out when FanDuel ultimately sold to Patty Bauer Betfair. That's been litigated in court for a while, and we had a decision come down recently not favorable to Nigel and those on his side. Yeah, what's what's been going on? This has been going on for a while. It's one of those lawsuits that uh, every once in a while crops back up. That's There's a, several of these hanging out in sports betting and DFS land, but um, Nigel Eccles, former CEO, founder of, of FanDuel, had been suing over the acquisition by Patty Power Betfair of FanDuel, saying that the the price of the sale was depressed so that he and some other founders and uh, early investors and 100 uh, or so employees would not be would not benefit from this. So that they, they were alleging in their initial court case that they were sold at a discount so that they didn't have to get paid more. So other other investors got paid. So they got paid less. Other investors got paid more. Pretty complicated story, but the bottom line here is they lost in their appeals court. They were found to not have a, a good argument that is not going to that they just tossed out their their reasons for uh, being able to bring this case. So back to square one, if they do this, this is a, you know, if this had happened, uh, it was a lot of money on FanDuel's side. Certainly it would change how they do it. But in, in the wake of all of this, like, uh, Eccles, you know, created a company that became eventually through Patty Power Betfair and, and the moves that came afterwards, the largest sports betting operator in the United States, also a player in online gambling, online casino. So um, they're not out of options entirely. They could possibly appeal this. Um, our legal analyst, John Holden, I don't think believes that, a, that a, an appeal would be fruitful or should happen. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. There is a lot of money at stake here for, for Eccles and the other, uh, the employees and early stage investors who, who joined this case. So um, not clear what this next step is, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it could put a little bit of a, of a finale on uh, something that's been hanging over Fandle and could have been a you know certainly you know, bad for business if they were forced to pay lots of money to Fandle for damages out of uh, out of all of this. You know, I will leave the actual legal analysis to a man with a legal degree and expertise in John Holden. I would encourage everybody to go to Legal Sports Report and read John's breakdown of the suit. But with you, Dustin, here today, I think what we can talk about is what was the trigger level of the valuation of FanDuel at the time, which is in the range of five hundred fifty million dollars, which I think now we look at and kind of laugh, you know, the idea that FanDuel would be available for $550 million, like even as crazy as the multiples have gotten in U.S. sports betting, even after that cooled off a little bit, we're still talking about a company in FanDuel that has such a sizable market share and a better situation on the books than a lot of other U.S. sports books that you would say it would be worth well more than that. And at the time, obviously, that's the case that Nigel and others were making was that, come on now, uh, looking at what FanDuel had the potential to be, it was worth far more than that. Yeah. And when the Supreme Court case uh, decision that came down that, that changed everything, changed all of our worlds, uh, the valuation was at $1.2 billion prior to that decision based on, on a variety of factors. But yeah, I mean, in retrospect, it is the best deal that anyone has gotten in, in in the sports betting industry by a large margin. We talk about other companies that have been spitballed for you know similar amounts of money that are certainly not worth that in in any way, shape, or form. Um, if you could go, yeah, if you go back in time and say, um, oh, I'm paying this money, this much money for the Fanduel name and the brand and everything you got with it. Now, to be to be fair, some of that you know some of that work came after Patty Power. Now, uh, Betfair took over. Now, yeah, and and now Flutter, like they took over and they they did a lot of this work. They they put the work into the product and all of that. But you know, the part of the the reason they have such a, a strong starting point was what what Nigel built and what and the brand that and that Fandel had distributed. And it's also not you know, in retrospect, like it, we, we it's always fun to go back and think about this. Fandel and or DraftKings might not be a company anymore if the if the, that decision had come down. So that was that's the other side of this coin is that. 
you know, everything had to break right. Like, there's no way I don't think DraftKings and FanDuel, uh, both uh, just on the daily fantasy sports model, would have survived. And it's still just amazing in retrospect to, that these are, you know, one and two, not even close still as we sit here. Um, and, you know, all, this case is, is harkens back to that era when there is DraftKings and FanDuel were in a lot of uncertainty, but also built for themselves what became, uh, you know, the starting point for, uh, you know, businesses that grew exponentially over the years. And as you say, one and two, and as you know well, could have been one and one as they <laughs> tried to merge uh, back in the day. So it really is a wild story. Kind of reminds me of Indiana Jones having to spell out Jehovah to make his way to the Holy Grail. Like there were fraught steps along the way here, and apparently both companies knew that. You know, in the old Latin, it begins with an I, and we're able to make their way uh, across safely to where they are today. Mm-hmm.